Welcome to Virtual Play Live Game Development Streaming. We're a small indie game company in the Netherlands, making a lot of applied games, but also working on our own entertainment games. We have big plans, including a lot of new technologies and very cool new gameplay ideas. For this stream, we'll be showing the entire process of building our new game Hatchball, which is not really technically innovative, but a mashup of pinball and collecting and caring for cute creatures. My name is Stefan and I've been programming and making games for over 30 years. When I was very young I already had two big passions, music and computers. So I'm basically a self-taught programmer from a time before the internet and tutorials and just studied computer science and artificial intelligence years later. Let's get started! Good evening! So I just introduced myself already in the little intro. I um, don't really expect a lot of people to sign up for the, like, watching for the first uh, stream, but I hope that a lot of people will be watching this after maybe seeing this uh, or seeing a uh, later one. <coughs> Sorry. Um, so I'm gonna, um, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm not gonna be, like, teaching you how to program. I'm not going to do, like, a course. I'm, I'm also teaching at University of Applied Sciences in Amsterdam. Uh, I'm not going to do anything like that. I'm just going to build this game. So, um, basically, just going to do it my way and you know, tell you a lot of things about what I'm doing while I'm doing it. Um, yeah. I'll um, show you a little bit about the game first. Ah. Hold on. First. Weirdness. My computer keeps changing display numbers. All right. So Hatchball. What uh, what is Hatchball? It's a it's a like I said a pinball game, mashed up with a game where you collect creatures. So the pinball is actually um, just uh, like regular pinball, but you're playing it in a uh, setting that is completely different. It's a forest setting. I'm gonna try to show some pictures of that. I just did that on Steam. Let's get Steam here. Ah, I closed Steam. Ah. Was well prepared. Well, that's always what goes. All right. So here comes Steam. So you can see here in the Steam store, if I actually am able to get it here, we've uh, posted a lot of uh, details about the game yet already um, and here it is so you can see here in this uh, this screenshot that there's this this art that we already made and there's a layout that we already made we we came up with a lot of rules and uh, game design and um, you see here there's a, there's a lot of uh, cool uh, cool things that we already made the thing is you're playing in a forest and you're playing with an egg as a ball. Other than that, the physics of the pinball should be just like any other pinball table. So you really, we're really looking to get this physics really like very well working. So um, yeah, and then other than that, it, yeah, everything is like nature. So you you get this nice glowing effect with stuff because we we also are gonna do a day night cycle in this pinball. So that's the, actually the the most innovative. Thing about the whole uh, pinball side, you can see that in this um, little GIF here. Already was, yeah, like an earlier version that we made. You can see the ball going around, but um, we actually based that um, on uh, 3D physics at that point. So um, tried to get that working because there's a ramp and everything, but it turns out it's really not the best way to do it. Uh, so what I'm going to do now is actually create a entirely new project that's gonna make sure that this all happens so this is gonna be kind of this table I mean it's not fully it's definitely not um, polished and stuff but um, this is actually what it's going to be and I have to build the physics first so what I'm gonna do I'm going to not show you how the artwork is made I'm not, not going to show you how game design decisions are made um, though it is actually possible to like say something about that in chat or something um, in a comment 
So if you have cool ideas, of course, let us know. But um, we've got a lot of the game design of this uh, game already uh, done. So once you get this egg and you get it through the progression of this first stage, there's going to be a stage underneath it. And uh, at the end of that stage, there's going to be a nest. And uh, if you get it into this, this is the hatchery, you get, well, the, uh, the thing you know from more casual games, it's um, nests with eggs. You can hatch the eggs and then you can level up the creatures. So that's going to be the game. Uh, like I'm going to tell you way more about it while I'm just making this. So um, about making it, I'm just going to be streaming for, well, at least an hour, I'll just say that. And um, while doing that, I'll just, um, yeah, start stuff up like I would usually do, do when, when I'm not talking to myself. Well, <laughs> usually I would talk to myself a little bit, but um, I would... Uh, now I'd like to talk to you guys. Um, let me know if you have anything, uh, like if there's any trouble with the connection or whatever. Um, all right. So starting an, uh, a Unity project. I'm starting a new Unity project. I'm always using uh, the, uh, this is a, an older version that I'm going to remove from this list. I'm, um, yeah, going to add that back as the pre-stream version. Because I did some stuff already, I'm gonna. Oh, yeah, hold on. Let's go one deeper there. Um, I actually have that here. Um, it's a project that I made before, testing some stuff. I will keep it open, uh, just for myself, but um, won't show you guys what that's doing. So um. Let's just get that out of the way. I'm actually going to blank this out just for a bit. So you won't get any spoilers. <laughs> that music can go right now. Um, so what I'm first going to do, I'm going to set up a new Unity project. So what, I'm, what I just said, I, I always use the latest version of Unity um, when starting a project. Um, but while doing the project, I don't upgrade a lot, but uh, it depends on the project because sometimes we're doing stuff that's really like new and technologically new. And I always like to keep using the new, the latest uh, Unity stuff. So um, also goes for Unreal if it's game we're building an Unreal. I haven't done that for a while, but it's also possible or anything that we build ourselves without an engine even. Um, so. There's just this little bit of loading this old version. I'm going to put it on a different monitor so I can use it as reference for myself, but I'm not going to show you that yet. So there we are. I'm back to normal. Um, here I'm at the Unity Hub, actually going to make this new project. So Unity has these options. Of course, it's not a 2D game. Well, we've got 2D physics, but and you've got the options to use the new IDEF re uh, render pipeline or the user universal render pipeline. Well, the first Thing I'm going to think about is what is actually the um, all right. Oh, that's not good. Got a whole folder here. Well, let's just make I'll just make a new folder stream version and then hatch bowl. Okay, so this is my project folder. Actually, it isn't. Uh, hold on, hatch bowl stream version, that folder, and then it's going to be hatch bowl project name. And I actually made this file <laughs> starting out very well. Um, hatch bowl pre stream, no hatch bowl stream version. This folder, it's empty, of course, I'll just delete it. All right. So now hatch bowl pop doesn't exist. Okay, normally, I just um, make a new project, have to think about what pipeline I'm going to use. So this game is going to be cross-platform. That's something that I need to think about before I do it. Um, it's going to be on Steam, so I would be able to use the high-definition render pipeline. But um, it's going to also be on mobile because we want this, well, this mobile, uh, um, we, want, we want people to do the creature leveling and stuff like that on mobile. So 
I'm going to use the universal render pipeline because it, it's capable of doing high-end graphics. And uh, maybe at some stage, I will actually add the high-definition render pipeline, but I think it's not going to be necessary. Um, so yeah, just going to create this project, let Unity do its thing, and then I'm going to start adding my uh, bits, like the first bits that I add to like any project that I make in Unity. So I'm going to show you some stuff on the asset store. Um, while actually Unity is making that, I will show you um, some of the design stuff. Um, right, so we've got this thing. This is going to be our uh, main working background, let's say background. Um, I shouldn't put it be behind me. Um, there's this design document we have that have has every little bit of like mapped out, like A is a plunger, B is the lane, and C is a blocker so that the ball can't go back. Stuff like that is all already thought out. So there's a lot of that we could just use as an underlay to actually make the uh, the game. Um, but uh, there's another thing I could show you guys and girls. I'm just let, when I say guys, I, I'm, I mean everyone. <laughs> um, where did I put it? It's a nice little bit of how what, yeah some of the uh, hatchlings we're working on. They are called hatchlings little creatures uh, yeah here it is this is a testing scene the lighting is not very well done yet and uh, um, well maybe some <laughs> a lot of other stuff I mean they're all still running in the same pose stuff like that but you can see that we're actually we got quite a lot of creatures that the art team is working on uh, just to give you an impression uh, I say our team uh, it's usually about uh, uh, just just about four or five people working on uh, uh, our games, which means like there's there's multiple games that we're trying to build, and um, it's um, it's about fifty fifty usually. Uh, so two or three people would be working on the hatchpool right now. So this is our uh, our layout, and here's our scene. Well, this is the default demo scene for Universal Render Pipeline. And it already has, Unity wants to show that it's cool. And uh, what's going? Yes, I'm going to revert my window layout. That's fine. Because I'll actually show you everything. It was baking some lighting. You could see that here in the lower uh, right. And uh, hold on. My mouse pose is not on. Now it is. Yes. In this lower right hand corner. You can see auto generate lighting is on. I'm actually gonna turn that off first because I'm not gonna do anything with lighting at this point. So um, let's go to um, general. No, where is it? Rendering, lighting settings, and it comes onto another monitor. This lighting panel, I'll just always put it here behind next to the inspector. I don't know. I like that. Um, I'm gonna turn off auto generate because it's always gonna be doing a lot of stuff that I don't want it to do. Then there's this standard readme. It, it opens automatically, which has tutorial info, and I'll just delete those first. Then there's example assets. So sometimes I use some of these. There's some, uh, some settings uh, but, uh, that I would use, but uh, right now I'm just going to delete all those. Now you can already see that they all disappear from this scene. I'm going to put the hierarchy, I always do that, I put it here, because then the hierarchy is next to the inspector, and that's a lot of, makes a lot of sense while uh, doing stuff, uh, like select something here, drag it there, stuff like that. Well, you can see that the example assets are gone, so I'll uh, just use the, um, what, I'm, what I am going to use is the sample scene. I'll just save it now. There's this post-processing settings and camera settings and uh, light. Um, it's, a, it's always a nice starting point, and I can just um, do other stuff like later, like um, the things I want them to be myself. So I'm going to make my icons a little uh, smaller, and then I'm actually going to uh, add the first stuff from the asset store. All right.
Here's my asset store. Which is sometimes a bit slow, but going to my assets and I've labeled, it's a nice thing that, that you can do. I've labeled um, some of these things with the label default. It means that these are the, I'm going to press update here. It means these are the um, assets, asset packages that I like want to use in most of my projects. So uh, I'm going to just go from the top. This is Editor Console Pro. I'm uh, importing it so you can just immediately see what it is. Uh, it's a better version of the console. It has more options. It's more clear. Um, importing everything. All right. So if I go too fast at some point, um, I'm I'm just gonna go on. I'm not gonna like um, go slow and explain something again for someone who sends a chat message or something. You can always watch a bit uh, later. I'm just gonna. I want. I really want to build this game. Uh, this is one of the ways I can do it, just by um, using this time to also stream and hopefully gain some followers. Um, right. So what we got here is Console Pro, and I can use it here. Console Pro 3, I have this new window here. And instead of the console, this classic console, I have Console Pro. So I'll, I'll put it here and you can see them. I'll put them next to each other so you can see the difference. So they have kind of the same buttons here, but then this has a log that I can click on and then scroll and uh, there's extra info in there. This standard console, I'll just keep it there. Actually. I will keep it there just to have something behind my uh, camera so that you won't be missing anything. Right. Uh, I also always like put the console and the project here next to each other. And then uh, that's the first thing. Uh, UI graph, not going to use that anymore. I'm actually not using that lately anymore. So I might actually remove this label so it's gone here um yes do twin pro no brainer for any project uh do twin you can also get the free version it does kind of almost entirely the same i think you get tweens uh from code which you can uh like use for anything that has to move from a certain point to another point or just has to uh you you want something to um, have a transition or whatever you're doing and you want it to tween, you want it to ease, anything like that. I'm going to show you a lot of that while I'm doing this. Do tween is something I'm using all the time. I'm opening the utility panel. It needs to have some setup. It's compiling. That's one of the very big advantages of Console Pro. You're seeing here the compiling thing. It's really nice. Mm. Mm -hmm. I actually want to show you guys that when I press some special keys, I'm going to put keycaster on as well. All right. So now you will, I will actually also highlight my mouse clicks. I should have prepared that. Haha. <laughs> yeah. And then just had a little uh, restarting uh, thing right before streaming. So um, then text mesh pro is something that I'm going to include. And it's not something you can easily just, um, well, it's quite easy. I could just add a text object from Te Text Mesh Pro, and then I get this uh, window popping up. It says Text Mesh Pro Essentials. This appears to be the first time you use text, text Mesh Pro, so you need to get some resources. So that's, that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to add the examples. So Actually, when uh, just one thing, when you're using text in Unity, I, there's actually never a good reason not to use TextMesh Pro, as far as I'm concerned. Right, so I've uh, added a few things now. I've added the editor console. I've added do, do tween. Then I'm use, always using this. Oh, this is the old version. Hold on. Hierarchy is deprecated. Let's look in my big asset list. There's this newer version, I think. 
Archie Plus. Interesting. I'm just going to go to my assets. And yeah, there it is. Hierarchy. Ah, they deprecated the entire thing. That's really too bad. Well, I'm going to search for something new. Meanwhile, I'm going to use a deprecated version because it's really, really a um, lifesaver all the time. Um, you will see what happens. I've been using it up to now, so yeah. Hopefully, it won't uh, mess things up. It uses old API as well. Let's just see. Ah. Maya Adliner. Well, okay. So Hierarchy Pro actually adds a lot of buttons and a uh, few options to the hierarchy view. Uh, for instance, just to check where you can uh, enable or disable objects in the hierarchy view. Or a list, you can see a list of all the... Um, na -na -na -na. Lists. You can see a list of all the um, uh, components that are on an object. Well, here you, get, here you see, there's a list. Say, I've got an audio listener, I want to disable it. That's it. I don't have to click the camera, look for the audio listener and disable it there. I could just do that here. So one, one of those things. And other than that, for instance, turning on and off game objects. So easy. And also just like that. So um, there's a lot of things in here. Also, you got this nice view and you can label things with the colors, background colors. So you can actually make your hierarchy a lot of, give it, give it a lot more options. So yeah. Um, I'm actually going to delete this canvas now. I didn't know I wasn't using it anymore. So I am using it. I am going to see what um, what I can use in the future. But well, maybe I'll get back to you guys on that. Then there's auto save scene. There's a lot of different ones. Use whichever you like, but it's just also lifesaver. Um, you forgot to save your scene. Unity crashes and some work is lost doesn't really happen because it auto saves it I mean it takes some time if you once you get to very um, very large and complex scenes I would turn this timer down a bit so that it doesn't auto save all the time because it will take a lot of um, time to uh, save that yet yeah, then you can't use to go on smart snap buttons not sure if I'm going to use those but they're, they're nice um, rewired so there's a thing that I'm not going to use anymore. And this is because of a development of Unity. I'm going to remove it actually even from my uh, default. Rewired is a, also a paid asset, but it's really not, ne not that necessary anymore because Unity has just released its input, its new input system. It's a, a event-driven input system the way we actually want it to be. And it, it really supports a lot of controllers and remapping and stuff that we used to need Rewired for. I think it's not so nice for Guavaman Enterprise, but yeah, that's the way it goes. Then localization, kind of have to always think about, is this a game that will have text? Is this a game that I'm going to um, localize? And in general, the answer to the second question should always be yes, if you want to release a game. So I just add localization. I'm probably not going to use it right away, but let's see. And the last one on my list is uh, one actually by ourself, ourselves. I've made that uh, two years ago to a little um, asset that makes it possible to give objects a little label in the scene. Um, I don't need to import the demo, but anyway, I made it four years ago. Anyway, I made that. So. Um, it gives gives you the opportunity to give an object a label in a scene. Uh, for instance, I'll just show here. Ah, that's nice. Uh, let's see. Um, ba -ba -bum. I've got this special thing here. Object node. 
So you see here, there's a note that that's in the in the view, and I can just give it a color, and um, it will automatically. Ah, need to work on that because I think this is not as good as it used to be. I can change the font size, bold, etc. Et it, uh, it's going to be very useful in this uh, this game. Because uh, we've got this thing that I just showed you. I'm actually going to want to build all this as 2D physics objects. And I'm actually going to want to label that. Thank you for following. All right. So here we go um, with those standard things. Uh, let's see if I forgot anything. I made a list. Uh, auto save, console pro object nodes, localization, doodween, and yes. Then there's a couple of things that are not in the asset store. Um, as I said, this game is going to be on Steam. One thing that we need to use for that is steamworks.net. Uh, let's see. I'm going to get that from another project. Uh, la, la, la. Usually, you just download steamworks.net. You can find it. Uh, I'll have steamworks.net. Um, yeah, I'm actually going to try to just import it again from the downloaded version. Ah. Steamworks.net, what's the latest one? Mm -mm. This one, I guess. Uh, now it's importing into the wrong Unity project. <laughs> All right, I'll just open it from here then. Um, uh, somewhere I can import custom package. Go to downloads. This is where it is. This is this handy thing that Mac does. It shows all the files, but I just want the ones that are compatible. I'm going to go to the S. I've got way too many downloads. There we go. I should clean up that <laughs> folder sometime. All right. Looks good. Importing. And then we get a lot of uh, things that we can do with Steam. All right, then there's two other things that I'm also importing just right away. One is uh, a thing that I got together over time from different sources. Um, I've got a scripts folder here now. And I'm in the script folder. I'm, I'm going to reorganize all this later because now I've just imported a lot of stuff. And it's, it's going to be nicer to have this good overview like if I open my basic base folder it's it's not nice to have this uh, be um, so cr you know, like chaotic but in my scripts there's steamworks but I'm also going to make an editor folder oh uh, yes scripts gonna make a editor folder uh, but by the way I'm doing this on Mac but it doesn't really matter what with unity what you use so this thing is going to go there, increment build version. So uh, Unity will automatically import it now. What it does is when I make a build, it will increment my build version. Some uh, thing that, like Visual Studio, if you make a, a project in another um, system like Visual Studio or uh, some Java things, or uh, like many IDEs offer this option that uh, if you go to project settings, which is also something I'm going to do right now, and you look at your build version, it will automatically increment if you want it to. So this is TextMess Pro. I'm not going to look at that. I'm going to player settings. We see here, I'm going to build, build a game. The company name is Virtual Play. The product name is Hatchball. Version is 0 0.1. I'm going to make that 0 0.1.0. And then 
there's this build version. Um, it's build zero. I'm, I'm actually going to start at one. Um, I'm going to rename this because that's not our uh, name. We've got virtualplay.games. So this is the way we're naming. Oops. We're naming our uh, bundle. Right. So for now, I'm just going to keep everything here kind of the same as it is default. Um, I've got a lot of settings that I could do already for the mobile platforms, but I'm actually not going to look into that right now. What I am doing at the start of a project now, I am going to use 2D physics. I am going to do this first, uh, tweak it a little bit. Like I, This is a layer collision matrix, and uh, right now I have told Unity, or actually PhysX, the, the, the Unity physics system, that I don't want anything to collide from any layer with any other layer. This way, I have to consciously turn on collision between new layers. Actually, I have to always think about it when I make a new layer that I have to turn it off again. But it's, it's a real good thing to not just have everything be checked for physics. It probably doesn't matter a lot uh, when you're regularly doing stuff but regularly um, it can save a lot of performance and uh, you could do it later as a performance tweak but it's always nice just to start with all right um, another one and that's one that I wrote myself there's this script I will just put it in here delayed actions um, it's a script I wrote it a while ago um, You've got this thing called uh, invoke. Uh, no, um, I actually even forgot what it's called in Unity, but you can you can use it to uh, delay stuff. But um, this way that I did here is really nice. I, I'll show you later while I'm making things. All right, I'm putting my view to two D. Why? Because I'm gonna build two D physics. So. Um, First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to this this thing. I'm going to uh, search for the file, actually. Um, I'm going to put that in the scene. Where did I put that file? Here it is. Hatchable layout. So, do I uh, Yeah. No, I'm going to clean this up first. Demo scene is going to go. Um, these are all plugins. So, I'm going to put that in plugins. Mm, actually, because of all the compiling, I just really want to keep da -da -da. everything into plugins and then see if it complains about anything. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Let's see. I get no compiling errors. I can see that already here because of the colors. I'll clear my errors right now, so I can uh, see later if something happens. This looks a lot better now. So there's materials, presets. Presets is a new thing, but oh, well, if for, for people who haven't worked with recent Unity. Um, resources, scenes, scripts, settings. That's nice. It's a lot better. Um, what I'm going to actually do now is what I wanted to do, create a folder, and the folder is called uh, Images. In the images folder, I'm going to get that layout image. There it is. This is my image, and I'm going to make it into a sprite so it doesn't need to be square and stuff. There we go. And now I can actually put it into the scene. Boom. There it is. Now, I'm, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to think about the scale. Uh, also, I'm actually going to get rid of this light and post processing. Um, because I really don't need that right now. Camera controller can also be gone. That's a thing from the um, demo scene. So I'm also going to put my camera settings. Background type is not skybox, but background types will be solid color. And now you can see in game, aha, camera is not, camera needs to be pointing forward. Rotation set to zero. You can see that if I go back to 3D, 
rotation set to zero means it points forward. And then I need to move it back a bit. I'm going to put the camera at zero, 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 and then just move it back a bit. Um, I'm not going to make it um, orthographic because this game will actually be 3D. So I'm actually going to do a different thing. I'm already going to put the camera lower and rotate it a bit. Oh, it's going to be a bit too far. All right, so that you can see here, it already has some perspective in there. I'm actually going to rotate a little bit more. And then just move it up. Boop, boom. All right, so now we can see the entire game while learning, and it's still already in perspective. Um, probably want to make a, a portrait mode camera for it when you're running on a, on a tablet. Or, and a um, uh, landscape camera for when you're running on a PC. Actually going to do that right away. Why not? It's one of the first things I'm doing. I'm going to tweak this camera so it's good for, let's say, PC first. So um, uh, this, this top area, uh, you can see here, uh, you can see here, Scores and info I already put down there, portrait only. So I'm going to use that in portrait mode, but I don't want to see it here. So I'm going to get the camera, get it away from there. Oh, then I get more screen space for the actual game. Drain needs to be visible there. But that's a problem with pinball games in general if you play it on a PC. But we're going to have a lot of nice scenery around here. Um, I think I I don't have enough like this for the camera. That is fine. Maybe gonna get the player the option to change the camera view uh, in settings at some point. For now, I'm gonna call this main camera landscape. Oops. Landscape. And then there's this other camera that I'm gonna make. Just turn the landscape camera off and keep this one on. As long as you got a. Um, main camera tag it's gonna be okay uh, the one that's on will be found if i use it in script somehow um portrait camera and i'm gonna tweak that for portrait mode oh it's already in there nice so this is the the not the worst portrait mode on a phone but it is i think the worst portrait mode you can find on a tablet so i'm actually going to design it for 916 you just this is just 16 9 uh, the normal uh, screen, uh, but then of course nine is the width and sixteen is the height. And then I'm going to change this camera. I think this has to have a little less rotation, and just make sure that everything is visible. There's this thing where the balls roll from. It doesn't need to really be visible totally. I think. All right, let's see that left part, something like this. All right, I can later uh, change it whenever I want to. For now, I'm just going to use landscape camera, put this thing to free, so that I can just play. Eh, no, I'm going to put it to a square mode. See what that does? No, can't really use it. And I'm just gonna gonna go ahead and use a portrait camera for now. We'll see later what I'm gonna do with that. So what I've got here is a scene setup with some kind of like design thing that I use. And if I go back to 2D, I've set it up in such a way that the physics is uh, everything is vertical. You can see that here. Well, actually, the table. You'd say, yeah, well, the table is not vertical, it's, it, you'd actually want it to be something like this. Seven degrees, standard angle for a uh, pinball table. Well, not going to do that. I'm going to do this because I'm going to use 2D physics. 2D physics only work in this direction in Unity. So, thing I, oh, I'm go actually going to uh, get one other thing externally that I made before. And it's a, where is it? 
da, da. It's, a, it's a render polygon drawer. There it is. I'm going to kind of put that into scripts polygon drawer. Right. What I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a lot of polygon colliders. Um, and I actually want to do more than just see the colliders. I want to see them as lines I draw here all the time. For now, I'm actually first going to make this thing a little less bright. So I can work on it. And turn the background off here. Where is it? Um, huh. Don't remember. Well, doesn't matter that much. Do it later. Um, for instance, I'm just gonna try making this making a first uh, game object. This this layout thing. I'm just gonna keep the rest as it is. Uh, I'm gonna do input at another time. Firstly, gonna just start building some stuff so that there's just something to do. Um, so I'm gonna create a 2D object, and I'm just gonna say sprite. That's I'm really not gonna use sprites, but uh, just so I can add a um, polygon collider 2D. And then I'll just remove the sprite. But then it's got a nice starting polygon. That's just what I wanted. Um, this thing, I could, for instance, I see this thing in the middle. I could use it there. One thing that's going on here now is that the Z of this object somehow got to minus 8.2. I have no idea why Unity does get that kind of stuff, but I'm going to put it to zero so that it's all nicely at the same level. And the thing now is that I can't see it here. So what I what I made earlier is this thing that does, that's called polygon drawer. I'm going to put it on, onto that object and do it here, polygon drawer. And um, you see already here now that when I don't, don't select this object, is it's got this polygon drawn and I can change the color so it's even drawn over the polygon collider I could by doing this I can uh, normally like okay let's turn this polygon drawer off if I do this it will hide all in the whole scene all those types like polygon collider or polygon drawer it's the same as doing this here. You, you'd see that if I polygon collider, if I turn it, turn it off over here, uh, where is it? Polygon collider. You'd see that it goes back in there as well. So that's one of the handy things to do always. Um, but right now I've got this polygon drawer and you'd see that if I run the scene, it also draws it in the game view. There, there you go. So you see now that this thing is not only doing polygon drawing as a thing there, but also in, in game. It actually creates a line renderer that it will right now it, it won't save that. It will just be gone when when I stop the game. But this way I don't need to worry about my 3D models being in there already. I could just start a building. Now there's this thing. I can't really select this object. Why not? Well, I can. It's going to be hard. There. I don't want it to be that hard. Hint. There's this thing I can do. I made some icons already for the... Um, where are they? Where did I put my icons? I made some icons because if you uh, uh, assign an icon to a script and you put that script on an object, then you can uh, get the uh, gizmo in the scene, just like you get for, say, a camera or uh, like this one. There's this camera here. Normally, it's an object that doesn't have any like mesh or sprite, so you can select it by its gizmo. Um, there's this main camera. If I want to do that for my own type of objects, um, I can do that with my own images, but I'm just <laughs> can't find them right now. 
where are they? Where did I put them? Icons, here they are. Okay, so in editor I'm going to put it, and then I'm going to put it into, because it needs to be in a resources folder, I think. Maybe it doesn't even need to be, but I'm going to do that anyway. Icons, and I'm going to put all those icons in there. Up, up, up. There we go. So I made these icons before, just for all the things that I'm going to be using. And one of them is Polygon Drawer. Right now, you'd say, OK, there's an icon for Polygon Drawer, but I also have to assign it to the script. So I'm going to go to Script, Polygon Drawer. And over here, when I've got the script selected, I'm just going to select an other icon. And it's going to be Polygon Drawer icon. All right, compiling. Why? I don't know, but it has to recompile after you do this. And then you'll see, ta-da, it has an icon here. And now I can actually select it there. Now I'm going to actually make those icons a little bit bigger, like that. There we go. I can, now sh I can now select this object by its icon and uh, move it around. Um, going to put the center in the middle of this object and then just edit the collider and this will be my first object in the game. I could start with the ball as well but eh, then it won't have anything anywhere to go so I'll just start with this. So polygon, colli polygon collider editor in Unity is really nice. It just works the way you want it to. If you want to add a point you just click and drag. If you want to delete a point you press command or control, I think, on uh, Windows. So that's it. I have to turn off the editor. And I'm going to make this uh, gray because it's a rock. And now I've got this thing. Oh, actually, I'm selecting this, uh, this thing all the time. I can actually just lock it by putting it on a layer. Um, I'm going to make a layer of helpers. You could call it helpers or dummies. I usually call it helpers and this thing is going to go in the helpers layer and I'm actually going to here say um, helpers it locked which means now I can't select this and it will just be an under layer super handy um, so what I said earlier about making new layers I'm going to go into physics and turn all these collisions off for the helpers it's a thing I do automatically when I make a new layer, but well. Um, all right. So I got this thing still called new sprite. It should be um, obstacle. Obstacle. One. I always do this naming convention because Unity, or when I copy it, automatically puts it behind there anyway. And I'm just going to create obstacle two just to show. I'm going to do it, and then maybe I'm going to add the ball and get the physics for that first. Um, just going to go here. Edit the collider. So uh, you don't really have to worry a lot about like polygon colliders in 2D. They are, uh, they are 2D. They are pretty well performing. All right, that's one, that's two. So now I've got obstacle one, obstacle two. Uh, they, they're not really things I can, I will, I will interact with later. So I'm just going to, for now, um, not give them a label or anything. Uh, this is something that I'm not going to do, actually. Um, I want the ball to be rolling back there at a certain point. So that, no, that's not good. Um, I'm going to do make it more into this shape so that the ball will roll through that at a certain point. Um, then what I could also just see here already is that the ball will never go here because I I'm, I'm really don't want the ball to go there because then it will be stuck. That's a basic pinball thing. So what I'm actually going to already do is not make this thing like this. But I'm going to make it be the side of this. Oops. It will be the side of this. There we go. Um, actually, can 
already go on there, but I won't. Let's see. Yeah, I could do that. I can go on this far and make this into one big obstacle because there's really no point in having this be different objects. Right. So this is now my obstacle. I could uh, just turn off the layout for a little bit. Oof. Now I really need to go into my um, theme settings. That's it. No skybox color and no. Ah, that's not good. Uh, that's ambient light. Mm. Maybe the maybe the background is well is okay already now. So I turned the skybox off to get the uh, background of the ah nice uh, of the uh, scene editor to become gray. So I actually can see my objects now. So these are my two first two objects, and I see something that I actually don't want to do for a lot of other things. And I that I placed the pivot over here and then just extended it all the way to the top. For this thing, it doesn't really matter, but uh, I want to be careful with that in the future. All right. Um, well, what do you say? I'll just add the bowl. Um, for the bowl, I'm actually just going to create an empty object. Call it bowl. Add a circle collider. All right. So this size, I'm now going to really have to think about the sizes scale um because i just created these objects and i i that's actually something i think i kind of did wrong there um so i'm going to figure out what the scale needs to be by usually um let's see uh, usually i want to just test the physics I want to see that something is um, like it has to be a logical size. So, um, what do I need the size of this thing to be? I'm going to turn this um, helper layer back on. This background. How big in real world terms do I want one unit to be? In Unity is usually like a meter. Mm. That's the, the general term. So I'm going to think about the size I want this thing to be. And it's probably larger than this. Let's see. Is this one unit? I'm just going to create a, uh, where is it? Quad. Quad is one by one. Should be one by one. Let's see. One, one. Okay, so this is one one, so this is one unit, so that should be meters. Um, that's not the way I want it right now. Let's just look at the physics once I give this guy a rigid body, 2D, and make it, it's going to be dynamic, it's going to be simulated, it has mass one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, it can do anything, it can turn as well. Collision detection will be continuous because I need it to be very. It I it never wanted to go to any through anything as well as interpolate. It starts awake because it's well, it's the only thing that's going to move. And now I'm actually going to create the layer that will have my physics. So two layers. There will be a layer of obstacles, and there will be a layer of uh, ball balls because there might be multiple in there later. Um, these obstacles will go onto layer obstacles. The ball will go onto layer balls. All right. And then in physics settings, I'm going to make sure that they can interact, but only with each other. So balls with balls, yes. Obstacles will not interact with obstacles, at least not yet, I don't think. And then obstacles with balls. That's the only things that the physics will need to check. So now it just needs gravity. It has gravity. It's got a gravity of one. And uh, I'm going back to the project settings to check the gravity settings. It's minus 
Um, actually, just gonna see about the scale that the table was. Um, how big did I want the table to be? Probably gonna have to be bigger than this. Um, so if I'm gonna if I'm gonna use this kind of scale, this gravity needs to be bigger because um, it's just one meter now. But it's not it's not gonna be one meter. It's gonna be ten centimeters or maybe even less. So I'm just gonna double it. See what that where that brings us. And the ball needs to have something that renders it. Um, I have this sprite. But I'm actually, this ball is going to be a, a 3D object, so that's going to have a model for the first time. So I'm actually going to make a normal sphere and give that these things. So I'm copying it from this and pasting it on here. Uh, hold on, did I copy? Oh yeah, I can't paste it because it has a sphere collider. I'm pasting the 2D collider and then I'm getting the rigid body pasting it on there. Now it's a 3D object with 2D physics. So there we go. It's a 3D sphere. You can see that. Oops, it's got a weird D coordinate. Zero. It's a 3D object. But it's got um, 3D physics. Actually, gonna ah, see a typo. Uh, I'm gonna make sure that my camera doesn't render all the unknown. Uh, uh, let's see here. It's just gonna render obstacles and balls, and not my helpers. All right. So uh, what happens now if I run this? This ball will fall. Oh, hold on. I don't see the ball. Oh, da. Yeah, balls. Uh, okay. I could use layer default instead, in case someone's wondering, like, why I'm, when I'm using layer balls and not um, default. It's to force myself to give an object the right layer. So if I just use layer default, then I might just miss one. So that's what I'm doing. All right, let's see. Um, and now it's going to fall. Hmm, pretty, pretty, it, it falls pretty fast. So um, for this, I should check the size that I actually want it to be. I think I'm going to do that uh, like outside of this um, stream been going for an hour now I'm just gonna go on a bit making some more of those objects obstacles and stuff uh, the ball is gonna get a bowl script oh new script bowl always just put it right away put it in scripts Mm -hmm. And I'm giving it its gizmo. Here we go. Ball. That's my ball icon. So it's going to recompile. Really still not sure why. And now this thing has a an icon. You can't really see the difference because it's a 3D object as well, but it has an icon. Right. Um, turn on my light. There's a lot of post processing going on here that I really don't want, but yeah, I'm going to look into that later. Uh, right now, it's just I got polygons, I got a ball. Just going to make some more of these things so that I can see if the ball actually drops on them. Uh, let me think. I'll make this one first. Um, yeah, no. 
The other side. All right. Um, that's going to have to be two different objects. So I'm just deleting these points. Something like that. I have to see. Why is it that like that anyway? Be something like this doesn't matter actually. The bow's never gonna get through that point. All right. Um, there's this thing. This is gonna be a ramp. Gonna have to come up with some nice solution to make sure that there's two levels in the game, like this level and the lower level. Why? Because there's um, this this bit. If it's here, it's on a higher level than if it goes like. Through this path and I've like switch layers for that that's just the simplest way to do it with 2d physics because usually if you'd have like usually if you'd have 3d physics for that you could just make a ramp and it goes up and you, you make it in 3d but um, I really don't need that I can make sure that it just sits in a different layer once it enters that that's why this that's where this sensor thing is coming in the, the z2 thing and when when it gets here it's going to go into a different layer when it falls back or comes back it's going to back, go back into the ground layer so I'm actually probably going to need two of those maybe I'll just start doing that already obstacles one balls one and then um, has to be something that actually going to uh, need to think about how many layers I'm, I need to use to make that transition because it's going to go in and then it it's it has to collide with other balls that are, that are going to be in the different layer so a ball that's here and a ball is coming back and they're in different layers and they have to collide with each other so i'm probably going to need some transition layers balls one two balls two uh hold on uh is that handy obstacles two balls two and that's probably it, but for because we don't know what the rest of the game is going to be yet, I'm just going to make these extra layers. Oh, obstacles three and balls three, so that we can have three different layers uh, where balls can go over each other. If we want to go crazy on some other uh, part, um, all right. So those are my extra layers now that I'm going to use later. Um, this thing is called Spear. I'm going to call it Ball by now. Actually going to put it up here somewhere. Going to rearrange my scene later. So this ball, let's just see if it collides neatly with those 3D, so uh, those things. They are colliders, they're not triggers, so it should automatically work correctly. The ball is still huge, so that doesn't really work. I'm just going to see this. Yep, okay, so that works. Uh, what doesn't work is the lines rendering. Ah, yes, because they are on default layer. Ah, that's something I did not put on. Okay, yes, I will do that. Just because I, I've made this script that renders those lines and I really don't want it to be annoying all the time so I'm just gonna I don't know why there's water layer standard but I'm gonna turn off those two and then the helpers so I will actually see those in 3d as well the lines hopefully yes there they are First bit is done. Um, before I'm making more obstacles, I'm actually going to put this scale right. Um, 
I was saying I want a skill that's bigger. Um, what did I use for the previous scene? I'm just going to check that to make sure I'm tweaking it correctly. Uh, 2.5, huh? It's gonna, it was this big. Does it make sense? So it's about seven. I don't know actually what the logic is there. Might be based on the size of a ball. Not really, no. I, hmm. Don't know what that is then. Um, going to go back into physics settings and just try some values. So if it's this big, let's see about that. And then um, the ball needs to be about twice as big. Hmm. Still, that looks too big. Yeah, okay. That looks about right, the way I wanted it. Um, now these obstacles are, of course, not okay, so that's why I, what I said earlier, dumb. Um, I'm gonna, yeah, just quickly redo them, because I don't like there to be scale factors in there. I just want them to be clear, clean. I really don't know why I'm doing that to myself, but I just am. It's some way of get, keeping stuff organized, I guess. Trying, trying never to use weird skills. I think it, it, it's because I've always noticed that it can bite you in the butt at some point uh, when you don't, uh, when you have like sc scales that add up to other scales, and then there's uh, some objects nested and they all have weird skills she's gonna put the then you get weird weird responses alrighty mm -hmm. that's gonna be my new scale so I'm just gonna try to get it running on this scaling and it really I really don't see any reason why I would need to resize again. I'm gonna look it up and probably hopefully tell you next time what the reason was for this specific scale. It's probably related to the real world scale of a pinball table. Um, this one and then I have my first bits over there. So the, the goal is to create a pinball game that's going to be feeling great even for pinball fanatics. So I'm, I'm going to have to tweak the, the physics on every little aspect. First thing is scale. So let's see about the gravity scale right now. The table is at an angle of 7%, so the gravity, I, I, I just simulated by doing lower gravity, mm. as, it's, uh, as it's 2D anyway. So I'm going to put the ball somewhere high up here. Oh, actually, something I forgot, because I turned that layer off in the camera. Oops. Um, is that the camera is, of course, now not at the right point. Here we go back into 3D to see the cameras. They're there. Just first thing doing the portrait one. Probably only needs this. Kind of. Something like that. And the landscape one. That's my hierarchy thing again. Ah, oh, it's so nice. It's not mine, but I mean, 
I hope that they made something new or somebody else made something like it because oh there I need to go to landscape of course. Mm-hmm. That seems okay. All right, I'm gonna go back to portrait, the portrait camera. All right, so now I can check this ball there. It will ball with a gravity of 20. Oh, I need to up that, of course, a little bit. Yeah, that does not look right. Um, then also what I also saw, I saw here that the ball was spinning. I didn't really see that there and it really needs a texture. Let me do that first and then get back to the physics. It needs some kind of texture. I'm going to go to the interwebs and get me a texture. Um, why not a standard UV grid? It's going to be nice to show spinning this one. Ah, uh, bloom. Now oh, that's just somebody's site. I just get this image. I'm not going to use it for anything, but um, just seeing what it's going to be. Oops, seeing what it's going to be. Yep. Um, Downloads UV mapper. There we go. I'm going to just put that on the ball. Uh, it needs a um, material. Actually, don't need a skybox material anymore. So, ball um, grid. Skybox material can go. Um, and where is my. I just. Where did I put it in images? No. Oh, of course, I put it in scripts. That's not right. I put it in images, and then I can get from the materials, I can get the images, the image into the base map. I don't want it to be shiny yet. Oh, well, why not? Just shiny. And then I can give this material to the ball. Whoop. Can I not? That's weird. You see it has this material now, so we can see it rolling. But over here I don't see that yet, but that's probably because of some lighting setting, fog or something. Ba -ba -da -bum. Fog. There we go. Now there's directional light, it's aimed Toward the camera, so that's really not helping. Yes, there we go. Turning to the light. All right. I'm gonna really make sure that this uh, is not so sh shiny. Ah, it isn't. Okay. Well, let's see. You can see the ball rotate here now as well. <laughs> the ball rotate. There goes the beach ball. Yes. I can see it spinning there. Nice. Oh, I actually don't need to do that. I can maximize. So you can see that it actually already bounces off and it, it gets some rotation, but I think it could use a little bit more, graf more gravity. We'll have to tweak that later, but I'm going to go into project settings. Put the gravity on, let's say 30. See how that rolls. I just use it to maximize on play for now. Huh, that seems good. Let's try it once more. That's a nice roll. All right. So, there's one thing going on here, and you already noticed that, I guess, probably. And that's the ball is just sliding. As long as it's not rotating around its um, axis that's pointing up, that the ball is just sliding. So we'll need to do something about that, and we need a trick for that. 
I just got the trick already, so I'm going to do that later. Um, let's see. Okay, what I want to do now is try to... Mm, yeah, I could actually make the rest of those obstacles now. My gizmos can be a little bit bigger. Yep, there they are. Oh, no, you can actually see that ball gizmo there. <laughs> um, all right. So let's say I'm going to make some more obstacles. Uh, this one specifically is all in the same layer. And then I am going to try to make the other layer soon as well. Oh. These less points. Ta -dum, ta -dum. That looks better. All right. So one of the things in the design is that the ball is going to be able to go into the into a gate here. Uh, it's called F one. And then it, if you shoot it in there with enough velocity, it will, it will come out at F2. And F2 is in the upper um, layer, an upper uh, plateau. So, yeah. That's going to need a nice throughput here. I'm probably going to tweak that a little bit. Well, well, let's just try that later. I'm going to make another bit. And that is a harder one. Let's see. For the side of this um, ramp here, it's gonna it's gonna be a very thin wall. But I'm have I'm gonna have to be careful not to make it too thin. Because if it's too thin, the ball will just go through it if it comes from the side. I think it's going to be okay like this. We'll have to test that on a high velocity at some point later. So that's the side of that one. And actually, just mm -hmm. going to make the. Um, uh, let's see. Yeah, the other side. Why not? That's this big obstacle. Okay, so I'm going to come into this right now. Um, I'm going to need to define boundaries for the whole thing. So. Um, uh, let's see. Huh. Yeah, I didn't lock that back. Lock helpers, cameras, don't shoot. Oops, should not show the helpers anymore. Yes, that's good. Um, actually, just gonna not show the game view right now because it's just distracting. Um, there's going to need to be an outer boundary. The way that polygon colliders work is they are only, the, the normals of them are to the outside. So you will only collide if you're coming from the outside. So if I'm going to make an object that is hollow, like the boundaries will be, I'm going to have to make two polygons. Let's just make those. Uh, so let's start here. Um, and then it's going to be the boundaries of the lower bits, because I'm, I'm going to need two different sets of boundaries. Oh, this is not a valid polygon. Ah. Yes, there we go. Um, hmm. All right, that's better. So what's going to happen here is it's this this ramp is this bit of the ramp is going to be up there um, but it will have to go um, a ways to there so i'm thinking this needs to be a tunnel over here because the ball has to be able to go in uh, actually doesn't need any weird bits there okay so boundaries here will run something like this. Where, huh, did I forget to copy that object there? I thought I put an obstacle there. Darn. Well, I'm going to go back this. 
not worth it. Um, yeah, I can actually just make it into the boundary. Why not? So I'm going to have to test the exact shape of that next, but on next, but at some point, let's just make this shape. Uh, because that's the low, the shape of the lower bit. And now we're actually even getting our first bit of the, um, the uh, on-ramp or the plunger lane, if it is called. And this, you'd say maybe, you'd think, like, is this ever going to look realistic with all those segments? I bet it is. You could just get away with that. So here's the plunger lane. And there's this bit where the balls have to roll in, new balls. Mm -hmm. Gonna be something like this. And they will have like stoppers here so that the ball will lie here. And once this thing goes down, then you get a ball that's lying there. So you can visually see, visually see, like physically see uh, what what balls you've got left. I'm just going to make this go up to here. You can make it a little bit more narrow even. And then let's see, this is the outside bit of this river that's gonna that's gonna be a river that will flow back into the plunger lane when this uh, block is there and if it goes up that's something that hatchlings will do i'm, I'm gonna tell about that later in, a, in another one of these sessions um or when something happens in the pinball then this this blocker would normally be here but it can go there to save your ball. So this stream, this will have to be a stream that brings the ball back to the right. All right, just approximate. I don't really, I don't really know if this is going to be needed to have all these bits here. But it's really not a big issue on performance for 2D physics. Um. All right, so I'm thinking that's going this this part is going to be an obstacle and not part of the outer perimeter. So I'm just going to make that run up here, up there. And there's going to be some target. Oh, it's going to be a slow down bit of grass, maybe, or a target. We'll have to see. And I've completed this. So now you can see that um, if I turn the thing off, this is an obstacle that's like it's an obstacle from the outside. So what I'm going to have to do is uh, create there's these paths. There's this element that's the first path. I'm going to have to create two paths. Now there's the two of the same. You you see it doesn't have an inside or an outside because it just overlaps completely. I'm just going to make it into three points and just going to roughly move them a bit so that they that I know which three, three those are. This is now the second polygon. So you can see here, there it is. If I put this outside of the first polygon, whoa, this looks weird. It's gonna look normal in a bit. Just a second. Now you see what happens. It's kind of a Boolean operation. So the outside is now an outside, Oops. and the inside is simply uh, actually an inside. So let's just give this, why not, just about a square, four points. So this is now actually not collision material, and these bits are uh, collision. So right now, you can see my... Um, Polygon drawer doesn't draw the second one. Um, this is called obstacle. I'm actually going to rename this into uh, boundaries so that it's 
really what ah, there we go it's really the boundaries of the level and it's well it's over there the pivot it really doesn't matter a lot so that's good um these boundaries i'm going to give a little bit of a different color i guess and now we see that if i run this the ball will not get out of there hopefully and it will still run in there and then once it's put down there huh, it's right out of the view all right so let's get the game view back and see where that goes wrong oh yeah i can't see that um this is my way uh, i I press pause and then play so that it pauses when when playing and i'll just see what this camera is maybe it just needs to go a bit a little bit to the left oh yeah something like this i'm gonna copy that because it's in play mode now that's why it's all red you should definitely if you did not do that go into your unity preferences and make the play mode color something else than uh, the usual so that you see that you're in play mode because now I can paste the values and it's actually moved now I can see the same thing happening but then actually with a result as in you see that the ball actually hits the wall there okay nice um yeah I think I'm gonna wrap up quickly It looks like it's getting somewhere. Feels kind of okay. I, I'm going to have to see once I add the, the flippers and stuff like that. Um, so, yeah, basically, I'm going to stop here for today. going to see when I continue this. It's going to be Tuesdays, Fridays, Sundays, but I'm not going to do every Tuesday, every Friday, every Sunday. So I'm going to do um um like one thing before i stop and that is actually starting a little git uh thing because i've set up a scene and i've set up all my assets and i'm gonna start a, a git repository right now i'm using source tree i might actually just show a lot of different clients as well during this uh, series but right now i'm just gonna use source tree Source tree is starting. That's one of the, well, only, yeah, maybe one of the only nasty bits about source tree that it takes quite a while to start. Um, ah, there it is. I'm going to make a new uh, local repository. It's going to be in my projects folder at hatchpool and then stream version hatchpool this is the project folder itself i'm going to use the project folder itself also as the git folder uh, if you don't do that then you should make sure that you use the right git ignore um, i'll refer to my tutorials for that and let's see it's called hatchpool it's git And you can see here, there's 11,000 files already. And why is that? That's because of these library files. I don't want them in there. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open this uh, in Finder. This is my folder. And I'm going to get my standard um, git ignore file. I've got it here. It's in um, a different. Uh, it's in a different folder. I'm going to save as. I'm gonna push it. Put it in stream version hatchpole git ignore. It's called dot git ignore. Yes, I want to use the dot. And when I get back to here. 
Oops, they're all gone. Those library folder, library files. So that's good. Here's the git ignore. It's something I really recommend. I might just make some uh, downloads for this uh, for stuff I use in in uh, in some future episode. Uh, I think I will do that. For now, I'm just going to use this git ignore. And there's the other thing that I need to do, and it's gonna I'm gonna have to make a git attributes file. I just don't know where I. Put my best one. So I'm going to search for it. Just do it a different way. I'm going to search for not good at three get attributes. Get attributes. That's get LFS. Ah, it's low. I'll just see if I got a recent folder that I actually use it in. Mm -hmm. Because there's a lot of different file types that you want to add to Git LFS to do large file storage, like images and videos and models and PDFs and whatever, whatnot. So uh, the things that are not code. And actually, they could be. Oh, strange that I don't have it here. Ah, there it is. So I got this git attributes file. And there's just a lot of different types of things that I've put into LFS in the past. And I'm just going to use this one because I know these are file types that I want put in large file storage and I'm going to save it into this same root folder yes as a dot file so now there's this new git attributes file I'm going to stage it as well and um, right now I'm just going to make this the initial commit uh, initial commit All right, so what happens now, I've got a branch, I've got an issue commit, but I don't have a remote yet. So I'm going to repository settings and add the remote. I'm going to make the remote name origin as it's supposed to be. And the URL of that I've already created. A GitLab. Where is it? Here. I've created this GitLab um, project. It's empty now. I'm going to go details and not show all my details just copy the path there we go and that should do it now I've got remote and now I can actually push it to the remote push master to master home origin that's taken a while ah, okay there we go so now, if everything goes right, I should have, yes, here we go. So I've just authored this thing, initial commit, and it's there. I don't use auto devops for this, so I'm just going to close that. I'm going to give it a nice little, um, yeah, why not? Give it its icon. Mm. Ooh. I'll look for the icon. I'm just gonna. I'm not gonna show you all my Google Drive files. But... Catchable icons. Let's see. Steam assets. Nice little icon. Yeah, this one should do it. Oh, that's eh, too big. All right. Let me choose a different one then. Icon. Matchable icon. Well, 
it's not perfect yet but it's something so i've got this now it's pushed and now i can actually go in here it would have needed to ask me something about git lfs This all looks good. I don't have library folders in there or stuff like that or temp. So I'm actually going to make this into uh, add, adds all uh, used asset packages um, first version of physics. All right, let's see what happens. Does it actually put these things into LFS? Hmm. It should. It used to be that source tree would ask you if you wanted to initialize it for LFS, large file storage, but it does not appear to do that anymore. Well, it's uploading everything now. Uh, it's going to take a little while. So meanwhile, I'm just going to say thank you for watching. I'll be, I'm not sure, let me check my schedule. That's not good to appear on this one. Um, all right, so I'm thinking I might do it again on Tuesday, but I'll, uh, of course, I'll keep the, um, Stream schedule updated uh, Tuesday or Friday or Sunday at the latest I will see ah there LFS has indeed done it so it, it automatically works it doesn't need anything else so I've, I've uh, pushed this to my uh, um, GitLab repository and if I update this and you can see that yep, there it is all right and then uh, after this I will be adding a lot of other stuff all right. Thank you very much for watching. If you did not subscribe or follow yet, please do so. And um, if you did not know me yet, also, well, if you want to support us, uh, you could always consider becoming a Patreon because we got a Patreon um, set up as well. So, uh, yeah, that wraps it up. I'm going to end it with a little music that I made, but it's just. Uh, to say goodbye thank you for watching and see you hopefully in the next streams bye bye